The first step is to acquire a bulk supply of cardboard. Soak it down with the garden hose and allow it to fully saturate. At which point you can separate the layers to verify full hydration. Now, it's time to inoculate the cardboard with your mushroom culture of choice. First, we'll cover spawn expansion, or using previously inoculated spawn as your culture source. This technique applies to mycelium taken from existing mushroom beds, mined from wild patches, or gathered from any other source of live, active mycelial colonies. Break up the spawn into small, manageable pieces and cover with wet cardboard or paper you prepared earlier. Make several layers of spawn and cardboard, rolling tightly and folding so that the final product is quite well packed. A good target is a 4 to 1 ratio of fresh cardboard to inoculated spawn. Don't worry if you don't achieve NASA level compression. The idea here is that mushroom mycelium travels through a medium such as wood or paper easier than it traverses gaps of air. So reducing the amount of air pockets, even slightly, will reduce the amount of time needed in the incubation phase. After you've finished making a nice little spawn loaf, add a buffer layer or two of paper or cardboard. This functions as a failsafe against dehydration as well as a physical barrier between your selected mushroom species and all the wild mushrooms that are bound to be thriving in the soil where you will incubate your spawn. If you're just starting or don't have any spawn grown out this season, I'll illustrate how this technique can be adapted for auger cultures. Usually, spawn vendors will offer mycelial cultures grown out on auger. This is the industry standard for storing and maintaining master cultures of mushroom strains. Using a sharp utensil, such as a knife or scalpel, remove as much mycelium from your culture dish as possible. Don't fret over the small strands inevitably left behind. Transfer the entire sample, auger and all, to your pre-moistened cardboard and use a sharp tool or your fingers to macerate and spread the culture across the surface of the cardboard. One standard sized petri dish can be sectioned and used to inoculate several different layers of cardboard. Proceed the same as described earlier in this video, layering new cardboard and inoculated sheets in a roughly 4 to 1 ratio. Fold tightly when finished and complete the spawn roll by adding a healthy layer of fresh cardboard or paper as a buffer against invading molds. Now that you have fully prepared your cardboard spawn, you are ready for incubation. Plan this procedure for a time when outdoor temperatures are between 50 degrees and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 10 degrees and 27 degrees Celsius. For most temperate climates, this is any time from the last frost to the heat of summer, and again at the end of summer until the first heavy freezes of winter. Survey a location that will be free from disturbances such as animal digging, plowing, water logging, and dehydration. All your efforts and investments will be in vain if your spawn becomes dehydrated, dug up, or is left in standing water. I like to bury mine in an area of the garden that will not be disturbed, in this case, the berry patch. Place the log on top of the soil or in a slight depression two to three inches into the topsoil and cover with 18 to 24 inches of straw, leaves, or wood chips. After this incubation period, carefully unearth your spawn log and inspect for visual signs of mycelial growth. White, strandy, root-like fibers and fluffy tenaceous mycelium is a sure sign of success. Once your spawn logs are fully colonized, they can be used to inoculate more spawn logs at a 10 to 1 ratio. Or, if you're ready to move on to fruiting, cardboard spawn can be used to inoculate wood chips, straw, manure, logs, or any other form of growing medium. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and share with friends. Comments and questions welcome, and thank you.